we're back for another video. What might I be doing today? Well, I've been given this to repair. Um, this one belongs to my neighbor. And uh, the main fault here, whether you can see it or not, is this little um, micro USB slot here. Somebody's forced to plug in backwards and completely busted that socket. So, we've got to get into this and uh, find out what kind of socket's in there and see if we can find another one somewhere else. Now, I do have one of these myself, or at least the smaller cousin to it. And they're a good a JVL one. But by the look of that little QC sticker here, I think it's all probably made in China. <laughs> um, but anyway, this doesn't look very obvious to open, but uh, if you've used these before, you know that these bits come off. Um, and they reveal screws under the end, which are a standard little Phillips screw. And there's little bits of hair trapped under here, but... Um, let's get this open and uh, we'll bring our camera angle up here and we'll grab a screwdriver. My favorite little screwdriver here and I should probably grab a magnet for the screws. There's a magnet there. It's under all these. Come out. They are indeed magnetic screws. Awesome. All right, we'll get all eight of these out and we'll be back. Alright, now I've got the screws out, we're going to rotate round so I've got some room to work. And uh, we've got the speakers, it should be loose here, one of them was. I'm being gentle here, I don't want to break things. This one felt a little loose. I'm guessing there's probably some sort of seal in here because these things rely on having an airtight seal. Let's find a spudger. which I have several, courtesy of Tinker Man Mick, who are my reference a lot. Right, so I've got the outer shroud on here. I wonder if that unclips. I think that does. There we go. This one unclips here. There we go. Now. Yeah. Um, oh, there's another clip underneath there that I have to push down and out. Interesting design. Definite sequence to that. There we go. Right, now we can remove that off and we can see the speakers. So this is just the decorative gauze or protective gauze. We have our two main tweeters and we have our two subbies on the end. Um, and there's a couple more screws here. So let's get them out and I think they hold that rubber cover on. Oh, we can't see anything. Let's change our camera angle first and let's recap this. So, here's our main tweeters and our woofers and we can see two screws here holding this rubber shroud on. And, oh, four screws and there's another couple here. We can start to see the lithium cells in there. So, let's pull some more screws out. We'll put our four screws out. I'm just going to pop this up with a spudger. Drop that off. That's actually a rubberized plastic module with a rubber cover on the end. It's an um, interesting design choice. One thing I'm seeing is a change in uh, a lot of the manufacturing processes is to uh, just use all of the same type of screw through the whole thing. And uh, I kind of agree with that. That's a little bit how I design stuff. It seems pointless to have a dozen different types of screws and uh, lengths and shapes and everything just to put something together when you could design it around that. Um, we see our tactile switches here. These look like quality tactile switches. Well, that's the um, LEDs for turning that on, these SMD LEDs. But yeah, they're quality tactile switches. This ribbon cable is a solid core. These are a quality ribbon cable. So, so far from what I'm seeing with JBL, you do pretty well get somewhat of what you pay for. Now, it looks like there's this ridge here. It seems like that's a separate component. I suspect if I start undoing more screws, I'll be able to get deeper into it and to the back of this board here that I want to get into. Alright, and we're in. I actually didn't need to undo all the case screws here. I just undid these four and this little uh, plastic piece over the back here just dropped off and exposing this board, which is just free floating and that makes life much easier to repair that. So, so far, I'm actually pretty impressed. There's some quality bits in here as comparative to uh, most electronics these days. 
um, and it's fairly serviceable so yeah it's actually worth spending your money on these things so uh, let's see if I can get this socket off and find a similar one let's do a little bit of surgery on this um, socket here the socket's totally stuffed um, the back end of this has just come out that's definitely the contact pins that have come off and this whole section here actually I might not even need any heat to get this out I think it's just been completely busted off the board okay so and there are some tracks missing on there um, I'm hoping it's not the ones we want although by the look of this um, it shouldn't be too hard, too hard to connect directly to this but um, this might be a little fuzzy because we're a bit close for focus but I think uh, these two tracks here are what we want we might have to bust the microscope out on this one and uh, have a closer look and see what we can do. In order to get this out, I'm going to have to unplug a few things. Um, these contact strips I don't need to remove, they just come out. Um, now these I think are the battery connections, um, so I'm going to mark them before I remove them. So a bit of sharpie on this side for that one and a bit of sharpie on the front, just so there's some differentiation so it's obvious if I've got them backwards right and then we can pull those plugs out um, looks to be some fairly substantial batteries in here they're definitely a pack full of 18650 cells um, I'm not sure how many of them are but they are sealed in with a hot glue and they're wrapped um, you can see them in here I think there might be two packs in there as in two pairs so I'm not sure Anyway, for now, that's not the bit we're looking at. We have our circuit board out. Now we can get this under the microscope. Let's fire this microscope on. All right, now we better sort out our focus here for a minute. Now, where are we looking? Um, this side of the board here. Ew. Okay, that doesn't look great, but I think the two tracks that went missing are the ones that are not needed. I think they're the data tracks. Um, so these are bridge, these two, I think they're ground, and this is obviously our hot wire here, and that trace through there. So let me find a pointier pointer. Um, I think I have a couple off to the side here. Let's have a look. This might be pointy enough. So, alright, my microscope just had a bit of a glitch there. So now this, uh, this track here, well, my microscope is really having some glitches today. So uh, yeah, that goes over to around here somewhere. And um, that goes down through this resistor here. Interesting that there's, that's either a resistor or a capacitor, I'm not sure, but that's a cross ground. So I'd say that's a capacitor, just to help smooth things out a bit. This is clearly ground trace with all the vias through the other side of the board. So that is definitely ground. Uh, oh, okay, and that is definitely marked as negative, and that's marked as positive. All right, let's see if I can find a surface mount micro B socket on something else that might be able to attach to these. Okay, go see what we have to dismantle. All right, well, I think, think I found a socket um, on the end of this. This is an old drone project that I was mucking around with and uh, this is used purely just for charging um, and I have an external charger anyway um, because I charge a bigger battery that I mounted on this than what was originally designed to go on here um, and I need to redesign this anyway because these flexible links that were designed to save the props um, they flex when it lifts as well it makes it a little unstable so I'm going to chop this board right off here and I'm going to lift that socket off it so um, and it looks to be identical That'll be handy. This is going to be a tricky angle, mostly because uh, I don't want to actually melt my camera or the case here. I'm going to apply just a smidgen of uh, flux on here, just a little flux gel, just to get everything flowing a bit once we heat it up. All right. Now I'm going to get my hot air gun, which will upset my UPS. Uh, it'll probably beep as I'm overloading. 
So now, I'll let this warm up a little bit and I'll get my tweezers off to the side here. It's going to be juggled with different hands, but hopefully I don't melt this thing. I'm going to try and get all this fluid. Well, it is moving a little. Maybe I'll stick these in the socket here. Here we go. Lift it off nicely. All right, let's let it smoke away there. That was quicker and easier than I thought. Helps when you've got the right tools. And uh, also what I've got clamped into here is actually my automatic wire stripper. So we'll rip that out of the way. Um, one of the reasons I'm removing this is that I can't seem to purchase one locally. So uh, I've had to improvise. So I think what we'll do next here is we'll get this board laid out. And I'll put a bit of flux on this one. This is going to be a slightly longer cut for this bit, guys. I hope you don't mind. Um, but I need to sort of work hastily. Um, and I need to concentrate. So let's just position our camera so we can see what I'm doing here. And uh, let's get this bit more flux in here. I wonder if I can just sit this back on here again and um, drop it back onto the same solder. I should probably really, actually, you know what, I should probably prep that first. So let's get a bit of solder on the go here first. Actually, no, this will be low melt solder. I think I should try without it first um, because I don't have any lead free on hand. Okay, I'll get my socket lined up. Let's get my hot air gun back on the go here. And uh, let's just, let's drop you in position here. And hopefully everything goes in nicely. And I can always tack a little bit of solder on this afterwards. Looks good. I'll let that sit for a minute and see if we've done the job. Alright, now I'll check it under the microscope and see what happens. Let's uh, start the microscope again. Okay, so let's have a look here. So that looks like, looks like these have gone in pretty well. They feel quite solid. Um, so I think they've sat down on the contact Wow, microscope is glitching. Maybe I've got a crook SD card or something. These guys have in a bar a little bit of flux in there. Um, I might just drop a little bit of solder on there. Being as the tracks are missing from these two, I might be able to get that tiny little iron in there. So let's, um, the heat gun's cooling off. We'll fire up a tiny little iron here and let it come up to temp. And um, while we're waiting for that, I'll find my thin solder. Um, which is MIA. I think I used a lot of that um, when we were uh, doing repairs for evacuees. Which uh, I need to do a video on that too. I need to pay my condolences to uh, a number of firefighting personnel that have uh, met their demise fighting fires recently. It's taking a little while to warm up here. We'll give it a minute. But yes, there was even a, um, a large air tanker from the US and the pilots went down with it. Um, there's not a lot of information about exactly what happened, but to what I understand, and it's, this is about third-hand knowledge, is that uh, they uh, went in to uh, fight a fire and the smoke obstructed their view, uh, and they basically plowed into the side of a mountain, which is actually easy to do with such a small amount of notice. Um, I'm going to rotate the microscope around. Uh, you don't get a real second chance when you're at that low an altitude. Um, and of course, under duress and having operated long hours, like, yeah, respect and condolences. Let's see if I can melt this solder yet. There we go. Now, at this point, I probably should get extraction fan going. Let's get extraction here, outlet fan, and we'll bring it right over the head. All right, now uh, let's see if I can get in to just touch these up a little bit. You know what, I don't think they really need much more that's gone in all right. Um, I can't really, <laughs> I've got the microscope angled so that I can see it well, 
um, so I can get to it, but uh, I can't really get to the actual unit itself. I think they've actually gone in rather well. It's on quite firmly. I think we're going to test it that way. I think we're all right. Okay, let's um, turn off our microscope and um, let's plug this in with some batteries and a lead and see what happens. Time to plug everything back in and also turn off my extraction fan. Get that out of the way. All right, now this is where marking the sockets is handy. Um, oh, okay, I would have plugged them in backwards had I not marked them. Um, I'm glad I did that. So the battery connections. Go back in. And that, I think... Oh, no, that's a battery connection as well. Oh, okay, so they're left and right speakers. Okay, so they must have passive crossovers in each side. Now, can we get this in? I might need my spudger tool because I can't get my fingers into it. Um, plug that socket in. And the control connection here. Okay. Again, the spudger will help to push that in properly. All right, let's find a micro B lead. So we're going to turn on our 12 volt rail which feeds through to a 3 amp 5 volt regulator. Um, I've also got a 1.5 amp LM7805 in here but that's not real good for charging stuff. Yeah, let's angle down again. Too much stuff to remember here. Let's plug in and see if we get a charging light anywhere here. This one goes in this way. Not getting a charging light on anything. Um, okay, let me just let's do some examining off camera and see what I've done wrong. So what I've done wrong is uh, I'd forgot to clean the flux out, and there's now flux all through the end of the socket here. So I'll get some cleaner and we'll get rid of that. The flux is gone. I've got a much more positive connection. I did test this off camera briefly, but let's actually turn our power on. So it does appear to be charging which is good. All right, so to that end, I'm going to um, button all this up and reassemble it, and then we'll test if we can charge it and make it function. All right, we've got it working, and we've got it charging. Our charge lights are showing up. Um, I'm gonna try something tricky here. I'm not sure if I can... All right, I'm gonna see if this works. I'm trying to play a bit of music through it over Bluetooth whilst filming. I think camera takes all of the processing power, so it suppresses all the tasks to the background. So I'll find another way to do this, and we'll be back. Okay, so I have a backup plan. I go across here and I angle up. I do have an output from the PC audio. So I can flick a bypass switch here, and then I can plug straight in the back of this. So from there... Whoop. So I've got some interference, but it is working. Let's feed it some audio and see what happens. I think what I need to do here is turn off some things that are causing the interference. So that is on, that's bypass. Okay, it is causing some interference. Let's feed it some audio and see if we can clean that up. So it looks like the short little lead that I've used is actually designed for programming, so it's not real well shielded, but I've got it to an acceptable balance. Let's see what happens here. So we're working. All right, I'll leave you here. I'll see you in the next video.